first thing that we want to compare are these terms known as diploid and haploid. And so these are terms that are going to be really important to understanding and being able to differentiate between asexual and sexual processes. These are also going to be really important terms as we move toward our genetics unit. These are terms that you're going to have to know to be able to, to um, extrapolate information and work out word problems. So we're going to write down some very simple non-textbook-like definitions. If you see something that's diploid, first of all, think of that die as two. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put something here. I'm going to put two in. And so you'll see something that's diploid represented as two in. What that means is that we're talking about a cell and that cell is going to have a complete set of chromosomes. And we don't really fully understand this yet, but I'll give you an example of that. Humans, if we're talking about you, your diploid number is 46N. And what that means is that you have 46 chromosomes in every single one of your cells. You have 46 chromosomes in blood cells, liver cells, lung cells, skin cells. You have 46 chromosomes in all of your cells. The other term is haploid. And haploid we represent as 1N. And we can define that as being half a set of chromosomes. And so we'll use the same example, the example of humans. If we're talking about humans, our haploid number is 23N because 23 is half of 46. So understanding that terminology is going to help you to understand the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction. And it's also going to be very beneficial when we get to our genetics unit. So on the other side of the screen here, I want you to write down asexual versus sexual reproduction. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to make a T-chart. And so on one side of that T-chart, I want you to write asexual. And on the other side, I want you to write sexual. This information will also help you with the Google form that you're going to have to do for your asynchronous work. And we're going to use some colors to differentiate between some of these items. So if it's asexual, we are primarily focused on the cell division process known as mitosis. If it's sexual, we're focused on a similar yet different cell division process known as meiosis. One of the main things that differentiates these two processes is asexual reproduction, reproduction has absolutely no genetic variation. Sexual reproduction, on the other hand, has lots of genetic variation. During the video notes, you guys learn two words, and we're not going to learn exactly what they mean at this point in time, 
but we do want to go ahead and start making an association of these terms to sexual processes and also to genetic variation. And those terms are independent assortment and this other process that you're going to learn about known as crossing over. So those are two ways uh, and two things that happen in meiosis that result in meiosis having a lot of genetic variation. And this makes sense if you think about it. So when you see meiosis, and I'll give you an alphabet analogy here, look at that ME. Think of me as in you. That's how you were formed was by sexual reproduction. And think of your friends or even your brothers or sisters or the other students at Apex Friendship High School. They were all produced by sexual processes. And that's why there is so much diversity in our school and in our community. Now, another big difference between these two processes is where they occur. And asexual processes occur in somatic cells. And what this means is soma is a prefix that means body cells. And so when we talk about body cells, we're talking about skin cells, we're talking about brain cells, we're talking about nerve cells, where in meiosis, meiosis happens in sex cells. And when we describe sex cells, what we're describing are the testes, if we're talking about the males, and we're talking about ovaries, if we we're talking about female sex cells. Both of those collectively, um, sex cells, whether they're testes or ovaries, can collectively be referred to as gonads. Another thing to consider when comparing asexual and sexual processes is the number of rounds of DNA replication and the number of rounds of cell division that occurs in these processes. So in mitosis, we have one round of DNA replication and one round of division. In meiosis, we also have one round of DNA replication, but this is where it's really different. We have two rounds of division where in mitosis, we only have that one round of division. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to go to a different screen and we're going to do a mitosis and a meiosis overview of this and, and look at how these two processes are similar, but also how they are different. So, On one side of your paper, I want you to put mitosis overview. On the other side, I want you to put a meiosis overview. And we're going to look at how these two processes are similar and how they are different by looking at their overview. So I want you to start by drawing a cell, a circular cell, and placing a 2N inside that cell. We started these notes by differentiating between the terms diploid and haploid, and we said that we use a 2N to notate a cell being diploid, which means it has a complete set 
of chromosomes. And so both of these processes, mitosis and meiosis, begin with a diploid parent cell. So we notice we use these terms, parents, we use that term from our starting point. We use the term daughters and sisters when we're describing things that are identical. So we begin with a diploid parent. Both of these processes start in the same place. However, it's important to remember that this would be a somatic cell, and we'll look at a specific example of this in a moment, and this would be a sex cell or a gonad, which means it would be a cell of the testes in a male and a cell of the ovaries in a female. With mitosis, we go through one round of DNA replication, and then we go through one round of division as we put on our t-chart and so that round of division is the prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase that you learned about during the cell cycle the result We have two identical diploid daughters. So in mitosis and asexual processes, we start with a parent, a diploid parent cell, and the end result after one round of DNA replication and one round of division are two identical diploid daughter. So an example of this would be starting out with a skin cell and ending up with two identical diploid skin cells. Meiosis, on the other hand, starts out with a sex cell and goes through one round of DNA replication But as we mentioned on our T-chart, it goes through two rounds of division. So we're going to call that first round of division PMAT1, which stands for prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. And then it goes through a second round of division that is referred to as PMAT2, which stands for prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. Now, since we divided twice after only one round of DNA replication, we end up with something very different than our two diploid daughters. And what we end up with is four and so our result so that we can be consistent is four and this is the important part unique they're all different from one another or can be haploid gametes and gametes is a new term for you as well and so a couple of new terms today gametes refer to either sperm or egg. And that would depend on whether the sex cell is a cell of the testes, which would result in four unique haploid sperm, or a cell of the ovaries. So that gives you a mitosis and meiosis overview, which will help you as you answer the questions on the Google form related to both genetic diversity and the difference between sexual and asexual processes.